This is going to be a classic map deck bottom bracket video. We've got a cannon down here with a completely messed up bottom bracket, a customer with a very set of specific instructions about this type of fix that they want, a whole bunch of solutions that we want to talk you through. But before we do that, we want to actually get a hold of what is the actual problem. First thing we do is try and measure it. If you want to know why I know it's messed up, this is the bottom bracket that I took out. This is from the non-drive side, black. This is from the drive side where this actual bottom bracket has been rotating and taken all the anodizing off and yeah i mean that just somewhat of a loose fit so let's see how bad the problem actually is quickly with our go no go gauge and absolutely swallows both sides of that so we definitely know it's over 46 millimeters this is a 46 millimeter bottom bracket but it's also a 73 millimeter shell and it's asymmetric so that sort of adds to our problems now on this side, our standard 45.95 fits okay up to the line and our 46 dead is just about, if I really, really pushed, I can probably just get it in a little bit. So that is, it's not great, but it's okay. So what is going on on this side? And let's see, is it even possible to fix? Your bore micrometer is really not gonna be much use in this because I don't think we've got anything remotely like a round hole. Uh, I can pretty much see that because when we put this in, I can see just gaps. Quite a tight fit across here, but I mean, you could just see it's overlaid. So you can see from here, it really doesn't take a genius to figure out that we've definitely not got a round hole, but how bad is the problem? So I'm gonna to refer to a set of internal micrometers. This just measures the inside. Now, the reason I wanna do this is I wanna get an idea of the size of the problem. And that's 46.2, that's a little bit bigger at 2.7. Okay, that's a little bit tighter at plus 1.5. And then finally, just this axis here, and this should be where our other gap was, 45.26. What we have is essentially our north, south, east, west, and our axis across here. So we've got <laughs> relatively tightest across the vertical axis, and then it gets progressively worse out towards the edges, exactly like we saw when we put our gauge on and you could see like the crescent moon shapes coming through. So we kind of knew where it was gonna be overlaid. So the question is, um, what do we do about it? Like pretty much what we know is we've got one good side and we've got one completely messed up side, which is definitely overlaid and completely oversized. So loads of solutions probably exist for this. Um, probably the one that you'll find in most bike shops would be one of these. This is a thread together bottom bracket. So you have your two things and essentially we're just gonna clamp this onto the frame. Now, I'm not a massive fan of these because I still think they need a fairly tight fit to stop them moving. And a gap this big, I think we're still gonna get some rock. Also, the threads on here are in a way that if things do go rusty, they'll start to undo themselves. So if you think this is now here, so our pedaling direction is this way, but because of the bearing precession that we've talked about in the previous video, I'll link that down, the actual rotating force on the outer side is actually backwards and they sort of undo. I don't think there's enough of a holding force here. Probably could get away with it by using a thread locker on this, but this for me, I just don't think they work that well. The next solution, uh, we'll go and speak to someone in carbon repair and see whether they could add some carbon material to this. We bring it back and we try it again. Getting the alignment with that is really, really tricky. Another thing that they sometimes do is they glue in a solution like this. So you can buy these bottom brackets, if you like, and you would glue these in. Uh, and this is the sort of glue that you might use. So this is uh, called Voodoo Glue from Easy Composites. It's a really good way of bonding aluminium to carbon. Problem with this is one, it restricts access to all the cabling that you might want. And the second thing is it's a 73 millimeter shell, but it's asymmetric. So we can't just screw in a bottom bracket to this because we wouldn't be able to cope with the asymmetric this side we just wouldn't get the right chain line, so that's a no. So the other solution is like a one-piece bottom bracket. This is one from Sen Vitae. There's other ones on the market. Now, you could either buy the proper PF30 asymmetric one, but then you'd have to push it in from the side that the manufacturer intended and hope that the side that you're wanting to hold is the side where the asymmetricness is. Or you could go for a standard 73 millimeter shell and use adapters, which means that you could put this in almost any direction 
and then rely on one side having a really good fit and the other side being filled with retaining compounds. Problem is these are all pretty expensive solutions like the carbon repair solution about three to four hundred pounds a thread together solution like this is 150 or so and these well 300 something like that sort of pounds so all kind of get fairly expensive and this comes back to talking to your customer and working out what their actual appetite is for expenditure now the bike is well used it's definitely a workhorse of a bike it's not their best race bike they definitely weren't keen on spending 400 pounds on a custom solution or repair i'm just thinking can i do something quick and easy and i think in this case we can here's my idea now Bacconi actually make an oversized bottom bracket and what this means is this is 46 0.1 millimeter now this has got a little o-ring on it and it's still not going to be a tight fit but we are going to get most of the way there so we still got a bit of a gap to fill but no way near as big so i've got one here that isn't oversized and that one properly rattles around we go for a normal bottom bracket on this side so this is one that i've already taken apart i'm going to put a standard bb30 bearing into there and put a 24 millimeter top cap. This is gonna mean that on this side, we're completely flat for our asymmetric. And then on this side, I'm gonna use the oversized and I'm gonna use a retaining compound. And then we are gonna to go to Wheels Manufacturing, do a kit for BB Wright. So when you're using these BB Wright adapters, you'll find that you have some machined del ring caps like this. And in the box, you'll get some bearing seats. This has just got the slightly raised surface. These aren't seals. These are the actual uh, little caps. And then you have a whole bunch of spaces that help you adjust the fit. Now, how do I know this is gonna work? Well, this is a document from Loctite. And remember that Loctite is the brand name. So Henkel is the company. Loctite is the brand name, and then they make lots of different things. So this is Threadlocker. We're not using Threadlocker. Be surprised how many people get that confused in the comments. We're using a bearing retaining compound made by Loctite under the Henkel brand. And there's a whole really helpful guide about you know choosing the right one. It's uh, pretty much exactly what this is designed for to fill the gap in assemblies like this. Essentially, you're going to choose one of these based on the gap size. Now, there's three big gaps on here. Gaps up to 0 0.15, from 0 0.15 to 0 0.25, and 0 0.25 up to half a millimeter. So you can fill half a millimeter gap potentially with just retaining compound. And a way to think about it is more like um a liquid shim, I suppose, that's just gonna go and fill gaps. It's not like a proper shim where we're gonna remachine it. This is gonna be a place where it actually finds the gaps and secures them. Also, you choose this on temperature resistance because a lot of these get used in like electric motors and jet engines and stuff. You don't have to worry about that too much with a bike. We do need to worry about the shear strength though. So the shear strength is how much effort it's gonna to need to remove it or how much it would take to you know break the bond. Loctite 638 retaining compound, gap up to 0.25 uh, with a strength of 29 Newton per millimeter meter squared so this is probably the one that we use most often you can see we've got a big bottle of it and we are going to combine that with an activator and this activator as it says on here is for especially recommended for applications with passive metals or inner surfaces with large bond gaps we've got carbon and we've got metal so we're going to use the activator to go with that remember there's two sides of a circle so the gap on this that we're actually trying to fill because we've got a 46.1 and we're trying to get to 46.27 at the absolute most divide that by two because there's two sides of the circle remember and we are well within the abilities of loctite 638 if we weren't we could actually go to a stronger loctite in fact i say stronger but stronger is probably the wrong word i mean a loctite with a higher fill capacity not a stronger shear strength then you have a loctite 660 which is like the last chance really once you fit in that you're definitely up to a really really big gap fill it's very rare that comes out and if you've got a relatively small gap then you have you know, like loctite 641 648 which is probably what you see spec'd on most instruction manuals assuming that everything is the right size so 638 bit of activator 
let's get working. First things first, clean, clean, clean. None of this will work on a dirty, contaminated surface. So starting with acetone, clean all that off with water, get down to your IPA. This needs to be absolutely pristine. Just quickly before I progress, some of the tools that you've seen me use on the channel before with stuff like this is a set of parallels and a ruler. So parallels, these aren't used to measure anything. There's no measuring gauge on here. These are more like a, a visual representation of the problem. Um, and you can literally just use these because you can imagine that if you've got something on the surface here, let's call it here, then in an ideal world, you want the other side of the bottom bracket to be touching here and these sides to be touching as well. That would be perfect. But if they're not, you, at least you can see what part is out of alignment. It's not a measurement, it's more like a, just to help you with the problem solving. And if you haven't got one of those, just a ruler will do because sometimes you can literally just rest the ruler on and you can see the gap. And in this case, you can definitely see if I hold that ruler flat against that surface, I mean, I can see that there's a gap there. So sometimes these are just a case of when you're doing like mechanical fitting, trying to measure, yes, but also in your mind visually understand what it is that you're trying to fix i think can really help so there we go not measuring anything just visualizing things that's all nice and clean next thing is let's get our bottom bracket prepared these surfaces also need to be clean first thing i'm going to do is just get a bearing pressed into there and because we know this is a precision fit we're just going to use a little bit of loctite 641 just to retain that All set then, I've got my oversized one for the drive side. That is the female fit, and I've got my normal one for the non-drive side. So get some activator. So the thing with this is, if you read the can, it says you have to allow this solvent to evaporate, um, which is sort of counterintuitive a little bit, but it takes about 10 minutes for all this to dry out, but you shouldn't really install any of this until this is pretty much dried out. It feels like the products are evaporating away, but no, it's actually meant to happen that way. A little bit of grease on this center section. You can see these Bocconi bottom brackets actually have the little O-ring, but they also have a tiny little divot just in there as well. So it allows the expansion of gap fill. And I'm gonna go on this side because as we push in, I want the retaining compound to go that way, if you like. So try and line up our logos. On the other side, we don't need that big gap fill. So just retaining 641 on this side. It's not quite good enough not to use any grease, sadly. But... Okay, now the fun begins. So we should be able to use the standard Bocconi cap on this side. And then on this side, we need to get a bit more inventive. So this is where we need to build this out to our 90 millimeters. So we are at 87 at the moment. So you'll see this is probably gonna be a little bit short for our chain line. So all I'm doing here, now I've got this fitted, just to take a look at the chain line, 45. So I think we're gonna to need to end up fitting just another little spacer on that drive side. Now with Shimano, you can tell, because this little piece of plastic is kind of the gauge, if you like, because when you put this down, there's a little knob just there, then if you can just see that sticking out, but that knob there is designed to line up with the hole. So you get a fair bit of tolerance with Shimano cranks because just here, that little hole there is there to allow that plastic knob to jump in. So if it doesn't, then we have a problem. Yeah, you see we've got a gap here. So I know that the chain line needs to go that way by about one to one and a half millimeters and we've got still gonna have a bit of a gap there to fill as well. I'm a bit more confident with the fit now. So I'm just going to start adding a little bit of grease so I'm just using two half mil spacers on that side. And one of the reasons I want to get the crank set on fairly soon is because this retaining compound, you get about a 10 minute cure time, which isn't a lot. And ideally you want the crank sets in because setting the cranks in is going to be part of your alignment process. Because once they're in, I'm going to leave it alone, let the curing process work. Now I know that I've got things aligned. Really, really don't want to ride it until everything's cured. So you get a fairly fast initial cure, but then I think the full cure it's still like 24 hours, so yeah. So you see we've still got a gap here. So in all fairness, I could actually fix this with the stuff that comes in the kit. You see that's just slightly raised, but the Bocconi ones are just a little bit more weather sealed. So essentially what we've done is that's the Bocconi one and that's that. So that's the gap that we're trying to fill. 
quick sanity check on the chain line it's going from the center of the bolt we are at 40 47 pretty hard measurement to get because you're trying to go from the center line of the frame to the gap in between the chain ring and inner chain ring but we are about 47 millimeters so good quick check using our gears okay Looks like we're slightly bit further this way than we were before. So I'll just adjust that front mech. But I know you guys all want to see how everything is spinning. So let's take a look. Nice. So only thing left to do is leave that to cure. Don't ride it. Don't do anything with it. Just let everything cure and we'll be golden. Here we go. 24 hours later, hopefully a full cure has set in. Now, we're going to run through some tests that I would do if you brought your bike into any bike shop with a creek. We'd normally go around and work out like what it is that was making the noise. Now, I did just do this off camera and it made a noise. I was like, oh, no, it hasn't worked. Uh, it was actually just the rear wheel bearings. So Tom has just done them for me. And now we've got I can really lean into that. And you want to test this in a variety of locations, really lean into it. And again, you can eliminate a lot of these things by uh, checking the back wheel isn't moving. You'll find the creek if you try hard enough. This one definitely needs some new headset bearings. There's a little knock there, but I'm really, really happy with the bottom bracket solution. But what if it hadn't worked? Well, there's a couple of solutions still left on the table. You could go to a higher strength or higher fill gap on the retaining compound. I mean, you can actually go all the way up to three millimeters with like liquid shim solutions. I mean, that's getting really extreme. Probably the next bit would be to get something custom made by one of the local frame builders. Simpson Frameworks is just up the road and we can probably get something made all the time. The cost gets out of control a little bit. Talking of which, what was the actual cost? Well, 75 pound for a bottom bracket. Now, I appreciate that not everybody is a sort of massive Bicconi dealer and has all these sort of spare parts lying around. For us, we're constantly doing bits and pieces like this. So we have left hand bits, right hand bits, and we can make things up. So worst case scenario, you might have to buy two bottom brackets, so 150 pounds, an hour's worth of labor. And then eventually just a couple of wheel bearings as well. I think they're about 5.99 each, another half hour of labor on top. So hopefully a really good cost effective solution to get this guy riding through the British winter. And we'll worry about the rest of the service in the summertime. And of course, all of that comes with a proper warranty as well. We always like to warranty our work, give you guys the peace of mind of the work we do. Uh, we've got your back and you can bring it back into us if you need to. So that all said, the only thing I can say is really when you're trying to do work like this, it really is about trying to get the full picture of the problem, really understand it, measure it, visualize it, really try and understand exactly what it is that you're working with before you just start throwing retaining compounds and solutions at it and then sit down and collaborate with your customer, talk them through the various solutions, work out what their appetite is, help them understand what the potential risks are, and then hopefully you'll get to a good workable solution without spending an absolute fortune. So with that all said, get down in the comments, let me know what you think. See you on the next one.